It comes faster, more powerful, and cheaper. C and C++ are no longer the only options for embedded systems programming. A high-level language such as Lua can easily run on modern hardware, thus providing an environment that facilitates rapid prototyping and development. In a set of tutorials, we will develop Lua code interactively that turns an LED on and sends an SMS message to your phone when a button is pressed. You may follow along the tutorials if you have an ESP32 rover board. The complete code can be downloaded from GitHub. The reasons we selected an ESP32 for these exercises is that the ESP32 provides a ton of ready-to-use peripherals. It's very easy to get started with, and ready-to-use development boards are very low cost. In the first tutorial, we will show you how to interactively develop code in a running device without having to restart the device or upload new firmware. The embedded code will be designed using a source code editor running in the browser. The source code editor is part of a development tool called the LSP Application Manager. The LSP Application Manager is a Lua application powered by the Barracuda Application Server. The complete documentation for the Barracuda Application Server and the LSP Application Manager can be found by navigating to realtimelogic.com slash BA. Expand the documentation in the left pane and navigate to the LSP Application Manager page for additional details on this development tool. To follow this tutorial, you must have an ESP32 rover development board, some wiring, an LED, and a push button. A breadboard is also recommended. C code experience is not required, but you must compile the ready-to-use C code and upload the code to the ESP32 as shown on the Barracuda App Server ESP32 installation page. We have based the push button example on a tutorial you can find on microcontrollerslab.com. The written tutorial provides some great tips on how to wire the push button and the LED to the ESP32. The site also provides additional information for developers new to general purpose input-output, also known as GPIO. We have wired our ESP32 using the same GPIO pins as the microcontrollerslab.com tutorial. How to upload the code to ESP32 is shown in another video. You may power on the board using a standard USB charger when the firmware has been uploaded. In this video, we are using a Windows computer to power the USB, which also permits us to view the serial output in a terminal window such as PuTTY. Note that you can easily do development without the serial console. The device IP address is printed in the terminal when it is connected to the Wi-Fi. We may navigate to the LSP Application Manager by entering this IP address in the browser. You may also simply enter http colon slash slash BAS in the browser. BAS is short for Barracuda App Server. The first thing we must do in the LSP Application Manager is to create a Lua application. Refer to the LSP Application Manager documentation for details on how to create applications. We create a so-called root application, which means the application can be accessed in the browser without a base URL. The Lua source code editor automatically creates an index.lsp page, and this page is now accessible as the main index page. The LSP application manager is not limited to creating web applications, and we will use the index.lsp page as a scratch pad for testing our push button and LED Lua code. An LSP page allows us to quickly test code snippets. You may initially want to use our online Lua tutorial if you are new to Lua. You can run and edit code using the online Lua editor. You can also copy code from the online tutorial and paste the code into the index.lsp scratchpad running on the ESP32. As an initial test, let's see if we can get the LED working, which is wired to GPIO pin 22. Before going into the API for accessing the GPIOs, let's look into how Lua can access the physical hardware. Under the hood, everything is C code and the Barracuda app server for ESP32 is built using the ExpressIF SDK. This SDK includes a plethora of C code APIs for accessing all sorts of peripherals, including the GPIOs. High-level languages such as Lua cannot automatically access C APIs. 
For Lua to be able to access C code API, a so called Lua binding must be created. A Lua binding can be created manually or automatically by a tool called SWIG. Lua bindings created using this tool closely resemble the C code API. For this reason, one can simply refer to the C API for how to access a particular function, such as the GPIO functions we need for controlling the LED. All of the ESP32 specific Lua APIs have been created using SWIG. We are now ready to make the first LED test program. I will be going to paste in several code snippets I have prepared. The scratchpad allows us to quickly test code and we can immediately test any modified code. SWIG refers to the generated Lua bindings as wrappers since SWIG not only generates bindings for functions, but also for types. Notice that all functions and types are prefixed by ESP. The code generated by SWIG is put into a Lua table called ESP. All functions and types used by the Lua code snippet can be found by looking up the corresponding C code name in the Espressive documentation. The Lua code sets GPIO22 as an output port and then writes the value 0 to this port. Setting the value to 0 turns the LED on, and setting the value to 1 turns the LED off. When the Run button is clicked, the browser sends the Lua code to the ESP32 if the code is modified. The browser also initiates an HTTP GET request, which makes the Lua code compile and execute on the ESP32. The cool thing about using the LSP editor as a scratchpad is that we can quickly modify the code and run it again. As you can see, we can turn the LED on and off by modifying the code and then rerunning the code. Instead of manually turning the LED on and off, let's create a function that loops 20 times and for each iteration, the function turns the LED on and off. We sleep 500 milliseconds between turning the LED on and off, making the function execute for 20 seconds before it returns. When we click the Run button, the LSP page starts and executes for 20 seconds. Notice that we do not get a response since the page is busy running. The Done message will not appear before after the Run function returns and the LSP page completes. We can navigate to another page and still use the Barracuda app server, but the LSP page we use as Scratchpad is busy. LSP pages are designed for creating web applications, but can also be used as scratch pads as we do in this example. However, running a long-lasting loop inside an LSP page is not a good way to design code. We should look for alternatives that also permit us to create code we can use for production mode. The Barracuda app server includes a timer object we can use as an alternative. The exact details on using the timer can be found in the documentation. We are creating a timer with a tick time of 500 milliseconds. The sleep calls must now be replaced by coroutine yield, since the timer object runs as a Lua coroutine, i.e. as a lightweight thread. When we click the Run button, the LSP page immediately returns the response. However, the timer object continues to run in the background. For the final code, we will use a timer object to pull the button for state changes and then act upon the change state. For now, let's continue with our scratchpad development. A problem with our scratchpad design is that if we click the Run button again, we create a new timer, but the old timer continues to run. Although this will not be a problem in the final code since we will only create one timer at system startup, it is a problem with our test code because we want to replace the existing code with new code. A simple fix to the problem is to run the Lua garbage collector at the top of the file. This will terminate the old timer as the timer is not referenced, i.e. anchored. In the final code, we will make sure to reference the timer so it cannot be garbage collected. But for our scratchpad, this construction is ideal since it lets us rapidly replace older running code. If you did not notice, the trace function prints the on-off status to the console in the bottom pane. The trace function is useful for basic debugging. So far, we have learned how to use the LSP editor in the LSP Application Manager as a scratchpad by setting the content type to plain text, thus effectively turning the browser into a console for any data produced on the server side. The data is not shown in the browser until the page completes its execution. However, real-time data can be sent to the LSP Application Manager's console in the bottom pane by using the function trace. Lua code in the scratchpad is executed on the ESP32 every time we click the red button. In our first LED blink test program, we created a program that looped 20 times in the LSP page's ephemeral environment. All LSP pages have an ephemeral environment that exists for the time it takes to execute a page. 
We also noticed that the browser was waiting 20 seconds for the page to complete. Autonomous device management code cannot run in an LSP page, so we must come up with some test code that resembles something closer to the final code. One way to solve this problem is to use an interval timer. The second LED blink test we created runs as an interval timer. An interval timer can run in the background, and we only use the LSP page to compile and start the timer on the ESP32. Each time we click the Run button, a new timer was activated. The old timer object continued to run, but we solved this problem by explicitly running the Lua garbage collector, which terminated the old timer. Timers must be referenced or they will eventually be garbage collected but having free-floating non-reference code when testing lets us quickly replace a background task with new code. High-level languages such as Lua cannot access C code APIs unless a Lua to C binding is created. We learned that all of the ESP32 peripheral APIs were created by a tool called SWIG. Note that all of the Lua to C APIs that are part of the Barracuda app server are handcrafted and not generated by a tool. Now that we know how to turn an LED on and off by setting a GPIO as output, let's look into how to create a program that reads the state of a push button. The push button in our example is wired to GPIO 15. We start by setting the GPIO 15 as input. This makes it possible to read values from the GPIO. We then enter a forever loop where we use the function trace to print the GPIO level to the real-time console. Notice that we use a much shorter timeout for reading the push button state. We want the code to be responsive, so we pull the button state every 50 milliseconds. Let's redesign the code and create a filter that makes the code print to the console only on state changes. This will limit the amount of data sent to the browser. Lua enables us to create an inner function in the interval timer function. The inner function level change blocks until the button is either pressed or released. The forever loop now simply calls level change twice and prints out either push or release. We now complete the design by merging the LED code we previously designed with the push button code. We first add in the code for setting GPIO 22 as an output, and then by replacing the function trace with the GPIO set level function. When we now run the code, we can turn the LED on by keeping the push button pressed. We can easily IO2 enable the push button code by sending the button press state to an online cloud service such as Amazon, Azure, etc. The Barracuda app server includes several IoT protocols such as MQTT client libraries, WebSocket client libraries, and HTTP client libraries. In the next example, we will use an online service called If This Then That, which makes it easy to create chains of simple conditional statements called applets. We have created a webhook trigger that sends an SMS to our phone when the push button connected to the ESP32 is pressed. The online service If This Then That's website is ifttt.com. You can sign up for your own free account and create your own applets. The webhook trigger requires us to use an HTTP client library and post a message to the URL provided by this trigger. See the Barracuda app server documentation for details on how to use the HTTP client library. The URL we use is for our own applet. Your URL will be different. See the IFTTT documentation for details. Notice how we defer the execution of the function sending the HTTP request to the online IFTTT service. I have placed a phone next to the ESP32. When I click the Run button, an HTTP POST request is sent to the webhook I registered with the IFTTT service. Note that it may take a minute or two before you receive the text message on the phone.
We have now completed the code development we did in the Scratchpad. We can now move the Lua code from the Scratchpad to the .preload file. The .preload file is a feature in the LSP Application Manager that enables us to start background tasks as soon as the application starts. The LSP Application Manager looks for a .preload file when the LSP Application Manager starts an application. The file is loaded and its content is executed by the Lua virtual machine if found. Let's get back to the index.lsp file we have used as a scratch pad, and let's delete all code except for the call to the garbage collector. The old interval timer is still running, and we want to terminate the code before permanently starting the code in the .preload script. We want to run the index.lsp one more time so we can remove the old interval timer. When we now push the button, the LED is not turning on. The code we developed to turn on the LED when the button is pressed has now been garbage collected. We can execute the dot .preload script by clicking the Restart button. Notice the printout from line 42 where we added a call to the trace function. The printed text indicates that our code is now permanently running in the background. Pushing the push button works as expected. The LED turns on, and we can see that we send HTT POST requests to the IFTTT service for each button press. The response messages from the IFTTT service are printed in the console. The LSP Application Manager can be used as a bootloader for starting your app at startup. However, you may want to completely remove the LSP Application Manager in a final product. We can now build new firmware with the Expressif SDK with a binary that replaces the LSP Application Manager with our own Lua code. We do not need to change the included C code if we follow a few requirements set by the LSP Application Manager C startup code. The LSP Application Manager is provided as a zip file, and this zip file is embedded in the firmware. The build environment compiles as a C version of the zip file and links the zip file with the firmware. To use the C code as is, we must create a .config file and copy all of the code we developed into this file. The C startup code in the LSP app mgr.c loads this file at startup. You may change the C code, but it's easier just to create a .config file. The C startup code also requires that a function is returned. We can simply return a function that does nothing. We now have to create a zip file containing the .config file and convert the zip file to a C array. The delivery includes a tool called bin2c, which does the conversion. Note that bin2c is a C file that must be compiled before it can be used. We can convert our myapp.zip to a C array as soon as we have compiled bin2c. The options we use for the bin2c tools is to match the requirements for the C startup code in lspappmgr.c, which mounts the zip file as a read-only file at startup. Notice that we are replacing the C version of the LSP Application Manager zip file. The build system is not using the zip file, but the C version of the zip file. See the Barracuda App Server's ESP32 page for how to use the Espressif SDK to build and upload the firmware to the ESP32. As you can see, we have now built the firmware, and we are now uploading the new firmware that now excludes the LSP Application Manager. The ESP32 boots after the upload completes, and we see the typical startup info being printed in the console. When we see the text Starting App being printed in the console, we know that our .config script has been uploaded by the C startup code. The LED turns on as expected when we push the button, and you can see the IFTTT webhook response being printed in the console. A web server is not automatically created, and our .config script did not set up a web server. You can see that the browser fails to connect when we click the refresh button. You can study the source code in the LSP Application Manager for how to set up a web server if needed.